Hello everyone, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I pray that God will open your eyes and your ears and soften your heart so that you will be aware and alert that hell is real and it was not created for us. At the time when I first shared this account, I didn't know much about what God said about hell, what the Bible said about hell, but now that I know more, I'd like to share this account again. There are some things about hell that the human mind just cannot comprehend. But I hope that as you listen to this retell of what I experience, and that you will do what you have to do to make sure that you don't go there. On April of 2017, a classmate of mine for nine years died in a car accident. A few days after his death, I slept and woke up in what felt like reality. When I opened my eyes, it was just completely black. I couldn't see anything. But I did notice that I was very light. I couldn't, I couldn't feel the weight of life on me. And when I looked down, I could see my body laying in the bed. Right after I saw my body, it went right back to completely black. And have you ever experienced the feeling of falling as though you're falling through your bed or when you're laying on your back and you're asleep, you feel like you're falling. That's what it felt like, except I was going forward and it's like I was being pushed extremely fast, faster than the speed of light. And I couldn't see anything. My hands were not existent. I mean, they were there, but you couldn't physically touch them. They would just go through each other. And Soon after, I started to feel very sweaty, and I started to get really, really hot, and it got more and more intense. Shortly after, I started to hear screaming, loud, 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 tormenting screaming, screaming. And at this time, I realized where I was heading, and I was so terrified, I was so scared, I didn't want to go to this place because it just sounded like torture. I didn't want to see what was going on to these people. But then I got to this point in this tunnel, this dark, hot tunnel that I was going through. And I got to this cliff. It was like a cliff. And when I look over, it's a sea of fire, an ocean of people far and wide, piled of all ages, young, old, all nationalities and cultural backgrounds and I was convinced that I've seen enough I, I just didn't want to be there anymore it was too too much pain I was feeling for these people when you hear them screaming you can tell and you can feel that it's tormenting and they are in pain and regret mostly regret and as I'm looking at all these people tearing their skin off their body and screaming and grinding their teeth I'm turning to the person that took me and I'm ready to tell him hey I'm, I'm ready to get out of here I don't like it here it's too it's terrible I don't want to go here and I don't want anybody that I know to be here and just before he allowed me to go he I felt someone tap me on my shoulder alert me that there was one more thing I needed to see and when I turned around it was the same person that I've known for nine years. And all I could do was scream, no! When I looked at him, he was tormented. He was screaming, he was crying. And I'm telling you, I've only seen him cry once in real life, but this was like unbearable. I could feel his pain. And what hurt me the most was that I knew I couldn't save him anymore. I couldn't rescue him. I started to ask him without saying words. It was just in my mind I felt like I was saying it. And he could hear what I was saying in my mind. I was asking him, what was the accident like? Did it hurt? And before I could finish that question in my head, he screamed back at me. Kayla, it was painful. But I would rather live in that pain than experience what my eternity is now. It hurt when my body snapped, when my neck went back, but it's nothing compared to the pain, 
pain, unexplainable pain that I'm feeling now. I wanted to help him. Then he said, it's over for me, Kayla. I'm doomed to destruction. This pit of fire is my home. But tell them, don't come. And he screamed, tell them, don't come. So this is me delivering the message to you. Listen to what this tormenting soul told me. Tell them, don't come. Your soul, when it's separated from your body, it's this being that feels things deeply. If you think you know what it feels like to feel pain, you have not felt pain. If you think you know what heat feels like, you have not felt heat. If you think you know what fear feels like, you have not been fearful, truly. Hell, it, it's, it's a completely destructive place your mind just it 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 over it's overwhelming the thoughts that go through your mind about every possible bad thing that you could think of and every regret that you could have and every despair every feeling of sorrow it's like it never ends it gets deeper and it gets deeper the longer that you're there and you just wish it was a nightmare and you wish it was over and you wish you just wake up but the truth is for those that are dead Without Christ, the body has gone back to the earth, dust to dust, and the Spirit of God has returned to him who breathed into us, that made us live on this earth. The soul is still alive, and that soul that is in torment, it never stops. He said to me he was doomed, finished, over. I felt pain for him. Somewhat subconsciously, I knew that this wasn't my destination. It, it felt like I was visiting this place. When your soul is separated from your body, your soul is this being that knows things. Like you, you automatically know things. Nobody has to tell you anything. You already know. So I knew that I was only visiting, but I just felt so burdened for him that I couldn't help him. But there, I didn't want to stay there. I wanted to go. I wanted to get out. I wanted to be rescued. Although I knew that I was safe with the person who took me there, I wanted to be rescued because it just felt it was such a tormenting place to be in. Even though I wasn't in the pit of the fire, I wasn't in the midst of the flames, but I felt it. I felt it. I felt it. It smells so bad. And you, you just can't put words to describe how traumatized the people who are there are you cannot put words to describe how much pain that they are feeling you cannot put words to describe it he told me to tell you not to come to that place but the time is going to come when god's spirit is received back to him and the body the temple returns to the dust and the soul is now on its own and what's going to happen to the soul depends on what that soul did while it was in a body. God's breath was in it. And that's when we are here on the earth right now. We all have a soul. That part of us never dies. That is the part of us that face eternity. And there's only two ways that eternity can go. It's heaven or hell. And we make that decision here. We don't make it after we die. You don't get a chance to cry out and say, God, forgive me. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Give me one more chance. We don't get that opportunity. We don't get that opportunity. Don't let it pass you by while you still have it. Do not let it pass you by. If you knew that God was going to take his breath back from you tomorrow, what would you do today? Whatever you said you would do today, do it. And I pray that that thing that you said was that you would give your life to God because hell is not a place of rest. You know, people who contemplate suicide, they think, well, you know, if I kill myself, then I will automatically be at peace. I'll go to the light and then I'll, I'll be out of all this pain. But that's not true. That's a lie. You go from pain to enduring pain forever. Pain that you just, you, you, you wish you would die. You wish you would die when you're in hell, but that doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. It's a privilege to be on this earth with God's breath. 
And the only way that we can be saved from the destruction that was meant for Satan and his angels is to accept Jesus Christ. So do that today. Ask him to come into your heart. Ask him to forgive you. Tell him that you believe in him and ask him. If you still are struggling to believe in him, ask him to show himself to you. But don't neglect him. Don't reject him. Don't push it away just because it's too hard for you to wrap your mind around it. Or you can't understand how a, a God that's so perfect could love us such an imperfect being. Don't be that person that rejects him because you don't understand it. The things of God are far beyond what we can comprehend. But his love for us, it endures. So don't allow yourself to be separated from hope. Do not allow yourself to be separated from hope. And I pray that you will be convicted to run to safety while you still have a chance, while you still have God's breath in your lungs before he takes it away and you are completely destroyed. He's giving you another chance. Don't waste this chance, this opportunity that you have. And please, I'm asking you to do your part to help me to share this so more people can hear about the horrible place of hell. God bless you.